Well, unlock the power of worship in your life as pastor and recording artist Martha Munizzi shares stories behind some of her most powerful songs. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Well, she is a prolific singer, songwriter, worshiper, and pastor, and her music has touched countless hearts, connecting them to the love of God in a very, very powerful way. She's here to tell us more about her book, Because of Who You Are. But before we get to that, she's going to share some music with us. Please welcome our dear friend, Martha Munizzi. Because of 
Well, she is a powerful voice for the gospel, along with being a very talented singer, songwriter. She also serves with her husband as pastors of Epic Life Church in Orlando, Florida. She's here to talk about some of the stories behind several of her top songs, which she tells in her book, Because of Who You Are. Ladies, Kendra, Anna, Dorothy, and Cindy, please yes. help us welcome Mark yes. and Eunice. Yes. Hi. So Thank you. I am just beyond excited. I watch y'all. I'm a fan. Yeah. So I watch y'all all the time. Well, so we've been so a fan great. of yours for a long, long time. time. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. I'm sitting around the table with you ladies. This is awesome. You are at the table. You're at the table. I got to hear the story behind. I heard you talking about it. Yeah. Say the name. Say the name. Well, you know, that, I, I, first of all, I love stories. Stories are so powerful. They change hearts. They provoke mm -hmm. thoughts. As a matter of fact, they say that you are 22 times more prone to remember a story than facts. Right. Well, look, that's what Jesus did. That's right. He told stories. He told parables. So I love stories. They really have impacted my life, and that's why I wanted to write this book and then share some of the experiences and stories and things that I've been through in my life on my journey. And Say the Name is a very special one because it's a story of what could have been very tragic um, but how God just did something miraculous. But we had just put our record out. It was it just come out, No Limits. That's what it was called, No Limits. And our kids were younger. I think our son was eight, nine years old, Nathan. And we had traveled to go be on a large uh, network. Um, we were going to be in front of millions of people, Christian television, and um, in one of, the, one of the Carolinas, I can't remember. And so we, we, bust our, we bust in, we had a whole tour that we had planned. That was the first night of the tour and getting ready to be on. And it was a big telethon and we were all excited. We we're gonna debut this music. We get into the hotel and our son comes, we had some time to rest and Nathan comes in, he's eight, eight years old. And he was playing video games back then, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and um, he, he came and said, Mom, can I take a nap with you? Well, that was my first clue something was wrong because eight-year-olds don't take naps, especially boys. <laughs> and he, I said, yeah, come, come lay down. And I, I lay down with him, but I was troubled. I just felt troubled. Something was off. He had his back to me, and when I turned over to check on him, he had, was coming up out of sleep, but he was having a grand mal seizure. Oh, my. And I, at that moment, didn't know what to do, and I, I started panicking. I did what most people would do. You panic. My husband wakes up, he panics, we're all panicking, and I realize we can't both panic. <laughs> so, yeah. yes. so he's calling 911, I'm calling on Jesus. And I just started singing this song, Say the Name, Say the Name, Say the Name. And I just was singing it over and over to him. And, and about two or three minutes later, he calmed down, the paramedics came, took him to the hospital. They did a battery of tests on him. And the doctor came in and said, we can't find anything. Well, before the doctors came in, my son would say, Mom, don't stop singing. Aww. Because the more you sing, the wow. more peace I feel. And he's eight years old. Just wow. don't stop singing. And so they, they, brought, they came back in and they said, we can't find anything wrong, um, but you just need to cancel your tour and go home. Wow. And I said, okay, thank you for your advice. <laughs> so we, we kind of got in a huddle and prayed and said, Lord, whatever you want, we'll do. And we just felt like the Lord said, this was an attack of the enemy. Yeah. Just keep going. Mm -hmm. And if it happens again, we'll take it 
you know, step right. by step. And we just kept going, and he's 26 years old. He's never had another one oh, in his wow. life, ever. That's awesome. And I remember when he was about a teenager, I started thinking if he had the fear of having another one. I thought, well, we're going to wipe even the fear of this yes. out. Right. So yes. I looked at him one day, and I said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke the fear mm -hmm. of this ever happening again. You will never have yes. another seizure as long as you live. Yes. And he's 26 years old. Praise never God. happened again. Wow. Well, and I'm Jesus. Just, I know, I just want to yeah. say... I, seriously, I love that song. Um, but some of you, that's what, what's what you need to do. Exactly. Like in your situation yes. is mm -hmm. say the name. That's right. What, what is that name? The yeah. name is Jesus. That's right. And um, he will calm your fears. He yes. will dry your tears. Yes. He will take away your pains. Yeah. I remember the lyrics Yes, you did. Song. Good job. <laughs> and, um, but it's, it's, a, it's a great song. And, and you wonder, what is it about that name that changes everything. And it what does. is it about that name when we call on that name? Yeah. yeah. And when we invite the person of Jesus yes. into our heart and lives, how dramatically our life changes. I have interviewed thousands of people over 30 years, and it still is the greatest miracle testimony that when someone invites Jesus yes. into their heart, into their life, what happens next yes. is amazing. So you tried everything else? Yeah. Right here at the beginning of the program, why don't you try the name yes. of Jesus and say, Jesus, I need mm -hmm. you. And yes. Come into my heart right now, and he will meet you right where you are. Is that true? Have you seen it happen over the years? I have seen it happen. My mother says, Jesus, 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 all the time. <laughs> she just says that name, Jesus. Yes. And I just catch her breathing it, you know, and, and it, it's always been... Um, a, a standard for my life, that there is power in the name of yes. Jesus. And that's the song. When you don't know what else to say, when you can't find right. the words yes. to, pray, to pray, just say, say the, the name. name. That name <laughs> has yes. all power. It can heal you. Yes. It can set you yes. free. It can break off every bondage. It can yes. break every chains. Curse. Every curse. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's the, the name, name Jesus. above all names. Yes. Every When you say the name Jesus, demons tremble yes. and they right. flee. Yes. Yes. So you don't have to be eloquent. You don't have to have, you know, every scripture memorized and be feel like a theologian. Yeah. Just use that name. It's powerful. And it's also the answer to everything. Come because on. when you say Jesus, then you are surrendering everything yes. to right. him and trusting him. Right. Yeah. You That's know, right. So there's so much That's power. Exactly right. And you don't say it as a cuss word. Okay. No. So a lot of people, no. but when you say it from... A sincere heart of realizing that the Son of God yeah. yes. that left heaven's throne to come That's to right. this earth yes. to die on the cross yeah. for our sins. Yes, he did. And pay the price for your sin and for my yes. sin. And and all we have to do is it's a free gift. It's yeah. just invite him in and he takes away all That's the right. pain, all the shame, all the sin, all the darkness. And uh that's what he wants to do for you today. Well, your story, I wanted you to share something very personal that mm -hmm. happened to you. And I know you don't share this a lot. Right. But I really felt like there would be people watching today that would be able to relate. In fact, there's somebody watching that you say, I really can't say that name or invite that person into my life because all of this happened to me. Mm -hmm. So I want you to hear Martha when she shares this because um, you're going to relate to it and understand that Jesus wants you to come just like you are. I don't care what mistakes That's you've right. made. I don't care yeah. what has happened to you. I don't. Yes. It, Jesus doesn't care about any of that. Yeah. He just wants you. Yeah. He wants you to come just like you are, and he will pick you up, and he will wipe away your tears. That's right. He'll drive away your fears, yes. and he will make you a new person yeah. in him. And that's what we're talking about today. So... Uh, growing up in a Christian home, you yes. knew Jesus. Oh, yes. But mm -hmm. there was something going on that was very dark. It was a right. secret in the family. Just take us back to that. I was born and uh, raised by Christian parents, pastors, leaders, um, and songwriters. And, and on the outside, you would think, you know, everything is perfect. And that's a very special family. And we were. Um, but from probably, I would say, the first memory was six or seven years old. Again, I don't share this a lot, not because I'm afraid to share it, but because I want people to understand how God can heal and set you free. But yes. to not share it, I believe, is a disservice, too. Yeah. Right. Um, but I told my mother when I was about 12 years old, it had started when I was six or seven years old, that a very close family member had been molesting myself, my sisters, my cousins, and mm. this was happening wow. to us. And I remember my mother... Um, was sitting on the couch one day and she was asking me, she said, you know, when this family member comes over to the house, everybody leaves. 
everybody just disappears. Why would they do that? That's kind of rude. Why wouldn't they want to be around this family member? And my sisters and I had made a pact that we would never share this. And we, we would try to protect one another from it happening, but we would, you can't tell it, you can't say anything. And so... And that's what the enemy tells that, you. That's right. And it, yeah. and it, 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 it holds you captive. Keep it a secret. Right. In the darkness. Right. Well, you're only Don't. as sick as your secrets, which yeah. I've learned since then is yeah. true. Yeah. And so I remember my mother saying, why do they leave? And I said, oh, I know why they leave. I kind of said it tongue in yeah. cheek. And she was like, she leaned in, what do you mean? And without even really thinking, I found myself telling her, which I know was the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I began to tell her experiences and moments, and, and she just stayed so calm, which I don't know how. Yeah, but inside, I inside she was shocked. Inside yeah. she was. I bet she was just. The warrior was coming alive. Oh, Trying my to goodness. think about what yeah. in the world is well, this. Right, and I think she was already struggling in her relationship with my father. There was always, there was already struggles there. So I'm thinking all pieces were starting to come together this for This wasn't her. your father mm -hmm. that molested. It was not my father. Right, right. But it was someone close to the family. And um, so it was. One of those moments, and I swore her to secrecy as if I had that yeah. kind of power, you know. <laughs> and uh, I just said, you can't tell anybody, you can't tell anybody. And by the time I got home from school that day, it, it was as if everything had blown up. Wow. And my father was crying. Everyone was crying. Everybody was upset. Everybody was on the phone. The whole family knew. It just had gone through like wildfire. And it, But the light needed to be shown. The light, the light. Yeah. this is the thing. And I'm so grateful that it happened when I was a young child because... Who knows what I would have carried exactly. throughout my, I was married young, you know, exactly. my husband and I, you know, 36 years, I was married at 19. Who knows what baggage I would have carried right. that the Holy Spirit knows that would have been, it would have impacted my future and what I'm, even me sitting right here yeah. telling the story. Right. So it had to be uncovered and the Holy Spirit knew it and I'm grateful so that I could get the counseling. And I had Christian counseling, and I encouraged that. Amen. And I remember it, I had a woman that was like into deliverance. I mean, it, I think I had, it was one and done. She came in and did a whole <laughs> deliverance thing. I'll never forget it. And just, you know, therapy on throughout my life and just being encouraged that way has brought a healing to my family. And, and, and writing and worshiping. Oh, wow. Singing yes. the was presence my fire of God. escape. Yes. The presence of God. Yes. Yeah. Keep, just, I kept singing, I kept worshiping. And then just the, that desire to write songs was there at a young age. For some people watching, you think, there's just no way I, I can forgive. Did you ever feel that way early on? I think I did for a little bit. I think it was very hard, especially the way the family members, some of the family members handled it and blamed us and right. crazy stuff, just oh, toxic wow. things. Yeah. And Which I think you've a six-year-old. Yeah, no. It, I mean, and you've got multiple, on, multiple. girls yeah. here yeah. in the family. Yeah. Right. And still you've got people in the family that are saying, well, it was their fault. They, mm -hmm. you know, did this or that or the other. And you yeah. did nothing. Nothing. You just were a kid. And yeah. I, at at the end of it all, now, in, at the age I'm at now, which will, will go unnamed, no, um, <laughs> unnumbered. No, I'm kidding. 39 but and 39 holding. 39 and holding. Um, I, I feel almost grateful for it because yeah. it, it, it was an equipping. Mm -hmm. exactly. It's really been an equipping. And everything that I've gone through, my husband and I, our family, the things that I never thought I would go through, I'm grateful now that we're pastoring. Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful because it really helps me. Yeah understand what people go through, the difficulties, the and not be so judgmental. Right, you know, if your exactly. kid kind of goes down a path that you weren't expecting, don't blame the parents, you know. Right. Maybe it's their fault, maybe it isn't. But just being able to, to hold through, uh, hold the hand of other people that are walking through that as, as pastors has been the greatest gift. Yeah. And you... You've got this tremendously full life by not being willing to take on that victim right. mentality yeah. that so That's many right. really yeah. struggle with letting go of yeah, that. Yeah, it's very true. And you became the safe place for your children yes. That's right. because of how your mom handled it. You learned so mm -hmm. much just even in that moment yeah. of how to respond to difficult situations. It's true. And my mother, the way she responded, even though... I think she cried, she cussed a little, she all that, sorry mom, um, she had those moments. Uh, but I, I saw her just get up, never blame God, never have a moment where she was just, you know, in rebellion against God, never. She got right back into church, mm -hmm. she yeah. got right back, she would play the organ or the keyboard, she would lead worship, even through her pain, even, yeah. and I think that's a big part of it too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you, 
I, I find in pastoring many people disqualify themselves. I've got to step down because I'm going through something. And I'm, I think, well, tell me what it is. Because what you probably need to do is just keep worshiping. Yes. Just mm -hmm. stay. Yes. Yes. Don't quit and go sit on the sidelines. Yeah. Keep, keep pouring out. Because as you're pouring out, God is pouring into you and healing you. Yes. Yep. You know, people um, in the time of trouble, I found they either run towards God or away from Him. Yeah. And some of you watching, you haven't really included God in this at all. And uh, he's saying, hey, I'm right here for you. That's Come right. to me, all yes. ye that labor and are heavy laden, and yeah. I will give you rest. I'll give you peace. And so you need to press into him right now. He'll give you that peace that passes all understanding in the midst of turmoil mm. and trials yes. and temptations and so many other things that could be going on. You will find in him this perfect peace that you've yes. never experienced before. Um, what other song could you tell us a story about that maybe sticks out to you? I think it's the song Heaven, and it is one of my favorite stories. Again, I feel convicted that I have not shared this story enough, but the last year I've shared it a lot. But I was a year old. My sister and I were twins. I have a twin sister. I have an older sister. And my twin sister and I were staying with some babysitters because my, pa my parents at that time, pastor, they evangelized. They were preaching in a city about an hour from where we were. And uh, the, the, our nanny came in, babysitter came in, and noticed that I had a very high fever. My sister was fine, we we're a year old, and it was so high that they felt they needed to get me to the hospital. They got me to the hospital. By the time I got there, I, they say I was listless, like I was almost lifeless. My s twin sister was fine. She was still happy and bubbly, but I was just almost mm. out completely. And so they, they called my parents, they rushed to the hospital, and they told my parents in their fear, we need to do a spinal tap. We think she probably has spinal meningitis. Mm -hmm. So they did a spinal tap, and it came back that I had spinal meningitis as a baby. Wow. Wow. And so they told my parents, they said, if she makes, makes it through the night, which she probably won't, but if she does, we think that she will be paralyzed for the rest of her life. Wow. And that's wow. normally what happens. She won't have any cognitive ability. This is pretty much, she'll be a vegetable. I remember my dad preaching, telling that story, she will be a vegetable. And um, my dad sat on my, the side of the hospital bed all night long praying for me. You see why the enemy would target our yes. family. Yes, yes, of course. And um, so he, he prayed. He said, Lord, heal her, heal her. And God began to speak to him. And he said, John, let me ask a question. Are there any sick babies in heaven? And he said, no, God, there's no sick babies in heaven. Well, is there spinal meningitis in heaven? And my dad said, no, God, there's no sickness. There's no disease. There's no spinal meningitis in heaven. There, there's only healing and wholeness. And he said, then I want you to pray. God spoke to him. Pray the scripture on earth as it is in heaven. Let it be done on earth yes, yes. as it is yes. in heaven. And my dad began to pray that. I pray, heaven come on earth as it is in heaven. By the next morning, I was sitting up. My fever had broken. It was an absolute, it's a verified miracle. Wow. wow. And the doctors cannot understand what happened, but they know that I had it. And they said, she's healed. And I, it took about 30 days to kind of get, I was emaciated to kind of get me back to total wholeness. But I was, they said she, she was eating, you were laughing, you were back to almost to your normal self. <laughs> you know, I, one of the things that I really appreciate about you, and again, it's totally reflected in your songs, is that you always come back to worship. Yes. Worship, worship, worship. Yes. And it is, it's like you said it a while ago, it's your escape yeah. from everything. And if we can get the attention off of us, mm -hmm. put it back on yes. him, he does it all. And I remember, Joni, every time I've gone through something in my life, I'd get that text, don't forget to worship. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't stop singing. That's right. And I just think that's such a good word for someone yes. that's watching is it may Amen. seem huge. It may seem like there's no way you can win or get out of it. Yeah. Worship, worship, yes. and talk about and his goodness yes. and his faithfulness. There's so much good worship, too, that you can download. Oh, wow. And yeah. just look yes. for Christian worship. There's a lot of great music out there. And put that on and just just sit and soak in yes. the presence it's of so the Lord true. You know, for a few minutes. As a single person, um, you know, oftentimes, sometimes when I need to talk, you know, it's so easy to just call a girlfriend, you know, and just talk it through. 
But I am telling you, yeah. the best mm -hmm. thing to do is to worship. That's right. yeah. mm -hmm. Because that's where the answers are, that's, that's where right. clarity is. Yes. Yes. It's truly the best thing. It restores it really your soul. It, it really does. It's it a really weapon. does. It's a weapon of war. Well, we are out of time. We could go on, I think, talking <laughs> with, with Martha. I'm moving to this Dallas. Is so be a part, yes, of, yes. Yes. Be a part of the table with me for sure. Um, but I want you to remember that you were created for so much more. Yes. And the one who created you yes. wants to have get this, a personal relationship That's with right. you. And, you know, we're talking about worship. When you enter into worship, I mean, if you just sing that song, hallelujah, yeah. hallelujah, yeah. you just, yes. one word, you, he, right. it invites his presence. He comes into that room where mm -hmm. you are, and all of a sudden you do get clarity. Yeah. And he'll just show you what to do, how to handle a situation. And you touch the very heart of God. The Bible says he dwells in the praises of his people. That's right. And if you're watching today, you want a deeper, more intimate relationship with the Lord. That's why that toll-free number is on the screen. If you prayed that prayer earlier that we talked about and you said, Jesus, I need you. I want you to come into my heart, into my life today. If you prayed that uh, We'd love to send you a, a book entitled, Now What? We have it in English and Spanish. And just say, what do I do after I pray this prayer? Because God has so, so, so much for you. And uh, as I said earlier, I really felt led to say, there are some of you that there's a lot of things that have happened in your life that you don't know, you don't understand. But I'm telling you today, God wants to heal you. He wants to heal those dark places. He wants to shine the light of his love on it in such a way that your heart can be healed and you can be whole. And uh, we're really believing that for you today. All of us here at the table are believing that. I want to thank Martha for joining us and sharing some of the touching stories from her book. Be sure to pick up a copy of Because of Who You Are. It's available now. And for more, you can visit her online at MarthaMunizzi.com. As always, let us know how Table Talk is impacting your life. Leave us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. We always love hearing from our audience. Now, you know we had to have Martha sing us one more song. So here she is singing Worthy, Martha Munizzi. We'll see you next time.